raise your hand if you want to have a great relationship with your daughter. And raise your hand again if you not only want to have a great relationship with your daughter, but you also want her to be happy and self-confident. In fact, raise your hand and say, I. Maybe the relationship with your daughter is not going exactly like you would like. Perhaps you've watched as some of your friend's children got into serious trouble and you'd like to prevent that in your own daughter. Maybe some of the activities that your daughter is participating in are not really everything you would like them to be. Imagine what it would be like if your daughter could come to you and really ask you the questions, the things that are bothering her. Picture what it would be like to explore something together while you're learning something. Imagine what it would be like if you and she could explore possibilities together and create something out of a flat piece of fabric and make something beautiful to wear. I'd like to talk to you now about the art of bonding with your daughter through sewing. Wouldn't you agree that if your relationship is not what you really want it to be, that you might need to do some things differently. That you would need a vehicle in order to do that. Sewing provides that. It is something that you can get a physical result. And the internet, as wonderful as it is, and all the iPhone and different video games, whatever they are, are I'm, I think they're wonderful. But having something physical that you have created is like few other things. The time that you have with your daughter, when you can really have that special time and create the foundation that will make her into a beautiful young woman, is very limited. Soon, if you wait, two, three, four years, it will be too late to really achieve that foundation that you need to create the beautiful relationship that you can have. She will go on, look to her friends for support and guidance, and they may not be the kind of guidance that you would like. Come with me to the year 1951. It was a year of moving, a moving date. My family was moving to a new town a number of miles away from our old one. I was six years old and my father had just been appointed to a different church. We were going to a little town not far from Seattle, about 15 miles outside of there. And Western Washington is green and lush, beautiful mountains not far away. And this little town was a lovely little town. As we came to the parsonage, the minister that was leaving to go to another pastorate, came out to greet us, and their daughter, who was one year older than me, told me about a girl across the street who was exactly my age. She offered to introduce them to me, so I went across the street and met her, her siblings, and her mother. Her mother had long, kind of 
light brown hair. Fell down her back. Quite unlike my mother's hairstyle, which was very much in the early 40s style. Something like the telephone operator um, Ernestine that Lily Tomlin created. We were, my father's church that he pastored was a very strict, very small uh, church, and we didn't believe in makeup or jewelry, dancing or movies, and that was just a short list. We believed in being very plain, although the clothes we wore did not have to be. A high compliment that my mother would say about somebody that she had just met if they were from our denomination and they were very strict about their appearance was, she's as plain as a stick. And that did not appeal to me. But my new friend Cindy opened up another life, another part of the life to me. She told me about movies she'd seen about movie stars, and, some, and they had a television set. So sometimes we would watch movies together over, the, the, you know, being shown on the tel on television. And it was a fun time because we just didn't have those restrictions over there. We walked to school together, and when we came home from school. We would watch things like Howdy Doody, The Lone Ranger, Superman, and all those kind of programs. And I noticed that from the pictures she showed me, that other people looked a little different than we did. That year, for Christmas, my mother and father gave me a doll. Beautiful doll with red hair. I think that's where I learned to like red hair. And for Christmas and birthdays, she would make Liberta clothes. That's what I named her. She would make her, she made her coat, pajamas with heart-shaped pockets. She made her dresses, hats, even little shoes. She made our cowgirl outfit. It's beautiful, with a little cowgirl hat, <laughs> everything. So it was a lot of fun, and I watched my mother sew. When I was 10 years old, my aunt and uncle asked if I could come down there to stay in Southern California. My parents agreed because my brother and sister had gone down the year before for the summer. They were in our same religion, but not as strict. And they had a television. And I remember my uncle watching the Dinah Shore show, and he'd say, Hello, Dinah! <laughs> so, during that summer, they wrote and told us, my parents wrote and told us, that we had been moved to another part of Washington State. We had been moved to the eastern part, which is desert, unlike the lush green part of the western part of Washington. 